Okay, so with that, um, we're going to talk briefly about some, some class details, um, just so you can understand kind of what's going on and how the class is structured. Um, so with these class details, the goals for this class, as I mentioned in the very first video here, um, is not to turn you into, econ into economists. You're not going to be doing proofs of economic theory. You're not going to be doing scary math. You're not going to be doing calculus. You're not going to be doing any of that stuff. The main goal of this class is to get you to talk like an economist and to understand what economists are talking about. That is the overarching goal. Um, and with that, um, another goal is to help you understand the role of the public sector in capitalist markets um, and why we care about this stuff. So similar to the section we just finished here about why, why do this in, M in an MPA or an MPP program, um, I want to equip you with the, the tools and the knowledge of why you are here in the public sector and why you are intervening and kind of helping the pub or the private sector do its thing here. Um, and then the third goal here is to do some actual public uh, economic analysis. So I did say that you're not going to be doing proofs and you're not going to be doing scary math, um, but you're, you are going to be doing some math, but it's not super hard and I'm going to provide tons of support along the way um, to make it so that you can do this stuff. Um, if you took eighth grade math, you can do all of the math in this class. If you have not taken math since eighth grade, that's fine. You can still do well in this class and you can still do the math for it and, and you will survive, I promise. Um, I've taught this many times and everybody gets it eventually and don't worry. So if you're scared, don't panic. Um, so the way we're, we're walking through the content in this class is we're going to, the class is divided into three general sections here. The first is, um, this first unit here is about capitalism, markets, and public policy. It's um, what we've been talking about. And then um, in the next few sessions, we're also going to be talking about this idea of social dilemmas and fairness and inequality and how that influences markets and how that should influence public policy. Um, so this kind of gives us the backdrop for why we care about economics. Then we'll go into this, this world of economic models um, which if you've taken an econ class before, this is what you have learned um, with supply and demand and indifference curves and budget lines and um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, this is kind of the, the standard econ canon um, where you will have lines and we'll figure out where the lines cross and we'll find curvy lines and figure out where those cross. And that's, this is kind of standard world of economics here. Um, but if you notice, that's only a third of the class here. It's not the whole thing. Um, and that's by design. I want to spend the first chunk of the class here talking about the backdrop for all of this, why we should care. Then we'll talk about the kind of more boring economic models, this is the tricky stuff. And then once you get this, we're going to use these economic models to then talk about market failures and government failures and how to improve institutions. And so this will let us apply these economic models to um, things like public goods provisions and monopolies and externalities and climate change and government intervention and other issues um, that are more kind of applied in, in real life um, examples. Um, down here, this is just like random math equations they make up in my head. This stuff is real stuff. Um, and so again, by design, I'm trying to make this as applicable to real life as possible, um, minimize kind of the, the arbitrary math stuff that we have to go through here to be able to understand what's going on here. So keep that in mind as we go through the semester. Um, this initial stuff it should be relatively straightforward. This stuff is going to be somewhat tricky if you've never taken an econ class, but again, I will provide as much support as I can. And then this is applying the economic models to real life situations. And so that's, that's the general outline for the class. Um, the way we're doing this, um, the way we're studying this is with two different textbooks. The main textbook is this, this Economy, Society, and Public Policy book, which is the free um, online textbook from the core um, economics team. Um, it's a group of um, PhD level economists all over the world that have decided to make an open access textbook for economics, um, which is super exciting because um, most econ textbooks that exist in the world for MPA and MPP students or for undergrads are like crazy expensive, like $150, $200, $250. And they're, it has like the same content that's in here, but super expensive. 
Um, and so this is great because it's, it's free, first of all, but also I really like their approach to teaching economics. Um, they follow this, this similar approach here. I kind of adapted it from there where it talks about kind of real life examples of these economic principles and why we care about it, um, how we can use economics in the public sector. Um, the other cool thing about it is they wrote it for an audience that has no interest in ever becoming economists, um, which is you all, I'm assuming. Maybe some of you will go in and get a PhD in economics and neat, go do that, cool. Um, but the vast majority of you are taking this class because it's required. You have no interest in labeling yourself an economist in the future, and that is totally fine. This is the book for you. It was designed for you. Um, the other book we're going to be using is this called Naked Economics. It's by a professor um, at the University of Chicago, I think. Um, and it is, it's kind of like a, a very um, accessible introduction to economics, each chapter is um, just full of all sorts of examples of, of applied economic theory written in a very accessible way. It's kind of like if you've ever listened to the, the podcast Freakonomics um, or, or Planet Money where they're just like interesting stories about economics. That's kind of what this Naked Economics book is. And so it's, it's kind of a supplement to the, the, the main content that you'll get from this core book here. Um, so this is important, but like none of the stuff in here is going to be on a on an exam there's no equations in this book it's mostly just like here's what economics looks like in the real world in the public sector and it's kind of a a good popular press version of an economics textbook and so that's where these are our two main books here um so that's um that's kind of the main curriculum for the class the other thing that we're going to be doing is looking at different articles that have been written um, about specific topics in economics. And the tricky thing with the articles and something you should pay attention to, and I'll, if, if I remember, I will post a link on the website about how to read these articles. Lots of these articles that I will assign you are long. Economists like to have really long papers with extensive appendices to prove like every single little statistical test that they ran. Um, and then they're often full of like game theory, math, and a whole bunch of formal models and Greek letters and stuff. Um, when you read these things, feel free to skim right past those things or skip anything that looks Greek and scary and mathy. Um, the main, like the best way to read these academic articles is to basically read the introduction, read the abstract, um, go to the conclusion, see what they found, and then kind of jump around in the middle and look at the results um, and just kind of skip around to get the main concept of the paper. If you were doing like a PhD program where you cared about the kind of the very detailed methods of what the people are using in their research or the very, very detailed um, theory that they have, then you would go through and you'd walk through all of their proofs and you would do all of the math with them and stuff. We don't care about that here. What we care about in the articles that I assign you is getting the main gist of the argument, understanding the, the evidence that they bring to prove that, and then making sure that that makes sense. And so best strategy for that, again, is read the abstract, read the introduction, skip to the conclusion, and then go back to the results and make sure that whatever they found matches what they said in the conclusion. If the math is scary, whatever, just skip it. Um, that is totally fine. Um, you can do a very good close reading of an article um, for this type of class without reading every single tiny detail. So keep that in mind, especially in weeks where you might have like two or three academic articles that one might have like 100 pages in it. You're not going to read 100 pages. You're just going to read a dozen maybe. Um, and so you want to be able to strategically read these things um, to, to get the most important stuff out of them. Um, the skills that you need for this class, the background knowledge that you'll need. Um, we're going to be doing lots of work with Excel. So hopefully you've had experience with that in other classes in this program. Um, I will also post videos um, that show kind of a live example of me working through a problem in Excel of how to convert things um, to different values and account for inflation or how to find average costs and fixed costs and total costs and other things um, using Excel. And so there, there's going to be some video walkthroughs for that to help you get more familiar with the program. So don't feel too intimidated. Again, I will provide as much support as I can. Um, you'll also need some basic algebra skills um, and very, 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 very low level basic calculus skills, which I will again review and teach 
um, all of this stuff, like, don't worry, we will review all of this stuff um, together. I will make it as basic and accessible and easy to follow as possible. So if the word derivatives scares you, don't worry. Um, I will help you and you will understand and it will make sense and you will survive, I promise. Um, that's my main promise for this class is you will make it through, I promise. Um, the main hub for all of the content in the class is not iCollege. Um, it is this website here, which you should have all received a link for um, in an email, I'm assuming, because this is where you're watching this website or watching this video is through this website. And so that's the only way you can see me right now. Um, so this website is, is kind of your main hub. If you look at the top, these are the main links that we care about. This is the syllabus with all of the details for the class. The schedule page here will um, have uh, each, each class session laid out in a table with links to the content for that class session and then any assignment that this is going to happen. The content page here, that's kind of a, another way to get to the content. So every week or every session is going to have um, a content page that has the readings that you need to do and then the video ex or this video lecture and then the slides from this, from this lecture will be there as well. The assignments page will have all of the assignments there. And then resources, that's where I'm going to put all of the videos and extra examples and um, detailed explanations of how to do these economic principles. So everything will live there. Um, this link will take you to the Slack um, workspace that we're using. Um, so go ahead and click on that and you can talk with me and talk with your classmates. And so this is your main hub for the semester here. The main assignments that we're going to be working with in this class, um, I've, I've simplified it down from the in-person version of this class just because um, we're all remote and asynchronous here. Um, you'll have readings that you need to do before every session. Um, then you'll have problem sets that you'll do once a week that are just um, kind of mathy problems or uh, more essay type questions about um, the principles that we're covering in the class. Um, as I explained in the syllabus, I'm not going to be grading these for like correct answers. Um, if you do a good job and try your hardest, even if you get the wrong answer, that's fine. You'll still get credit for it. Um, you'll be correcting these or not necessarily correcting, but working through the problem sets after you've turned them in with your groups um, just checking the answers with the problem of checking your answers against the answer keys that I provide. Um, and so you'll be able to see where you went wrong. And then if, you, if you're still not getting it, reach out to me and I will help explain more. Um, you'll also have weekly reports, which is a chance for you and your little groups um, to discuss the week's readings and analyze the readings and critique them and apply them to things that are happening in the real world. So that, that's the main point of these uh, reports here is one person can evaluate the readings, one person critiques the readings, and then one person applies the readings. Um, and so if you look at the, the course website, there's more complete details there of what all of the roles are. There's a template that you should use um, to do these things. And so um, follow those examples there. Um, and then finally, there are two exams. There's an exam after the first two thirds of the class with the economic models. And then there's an exam at the end um, where we apply the economic models to externalities and um, um, public goods and other market failures. Um, the second exam is, it's not like comprehensive, like I'm not gonna necessarily ask you about stuff that happened in the first week, um, but it does use the skills that you learn from the first half of the class. Um, so like we're gonna be learning about supply and demand curves. That kind of stuff is going to be on exam one, but when we get to exam two, when we're talking about monopolies and other things, there are supply curves and demand curves when we talk about monopolies. And so like that kind of content gets carried over from the first half. Um, but we're not like you're not going to be doing like exact stuff from the from the beginning. So it is it is more focused on the second half of, of the class, but it will use pieces from the first half there. So that so it's kind of comprehensive ish, but mostly focused on on the second half. Um, and I provide study guides for both of these exams on the website. Um, I will post that as we get closer to the exam and you can look through all of the, I, I'll have a list of all of the things you should know. And so if you just print off that list and go through and check everything off and make sure you know it, you should be great for the exam. 
Um, so that's generally how the course is structured. Um, there are more complete details on the course website on the syllabus page and on the assignments page. Um, so go ahead and read those if you still have more questions. And if you have more questions, feel free to email me, talk to me on Slack, and I will answer them.